The high salt content of the Great Salt Lake would seem to preclude any aquatic life from making a home in these waters. And for the most part, this is true. There's only one creature visible to the naked eye that lives its whole life in the lake, the brine shrimp. This crustacean, which only grows to about 10 millimeters in length, feeds on algae and diatoms and can form colonies so large they will turn the water pink. In times of stress or hunger, they possess a very significant ability to form eggs in cysts instead of giving birth to live young. When these cysts are dehydrated, they will lie dormant and can be brought back to life years later. Many people are familiar with these cysts springing to life. They are sold to pet lovers everywhere as sea monkeys, a hybridized cousin of the salt lake brine shrimp. These brine cysts are the centerpiece of a multi-million dollar industry. Billions of them are laid by the shrimp in the lake, and when they float to the surface, the harvest begins. Dozens of shrimp boats scour the lake for slicks of cysts floating on the water. Then they stake a claim, encircle the slick, and skim the cysts off the water and into the boat. Twenty million tons of cysts are taken from the lake each year, dried in a secret process and sold primarily to Asia where they're used as food for shrimp and tropical fish. These tiny eggs routinely bring fifty million dollars a year into the Great Salt Lake's economy. Another species, the brine fly, lives its larval stage in the waters of the lake and its adult stage in huge clouds above the waters of the lake. It can be annoying to be caught in a cloud of flies when you're out on the lake, but at least they don't bite. These two tiny species, the brine fly and the shrimp, are the main culprits in most people's complaint about the lake, the smell. In 1850, explorer Howard Stansbury wrote that the muddy shores of the lake consist almost entirely of the larvae of insects lying upon the bottom and seem to be impregnated with all of the villainous smells which nature's laboratory was capable of producing. It's a misconception that the salt gives the lake its distinctive rotten egg smell this. This isn't sand. This is decaying biomass that's washed up on the shores of the lake. But these two species are far from being only smelly and irrelevant. On the contrary, they're part of a very important ecosystem. Brine shrimp and flies are food for four to five million hungry visitors every year. Birds. Geese, swans, herons, egrets, cranes, ducks, and more. Over 250 different species of waterfowl and shorebirds frequent the Great Salt Lake. The lake's islands and marshes are among the most important stops for migrating birds in the entire United States. And for this reason, much of the lake has been set aside for the birds. About a dozen waterfowl management areas have been designated for bird use, including Cub, Gunnison, and Hat Islands, which are reserved for the more than 50,000 pelicans that come to nest there, and Egg Island that belongs to Utah's state bird, the California seagull. Yes, the Great Salt Lake is a veritable birder's paradise.